Hey guys, Trevor Sullivan here, and it's been a little while since I've created any videos on my YouTube channel here. I've been really busy working at CBT Nuggets, building out lots of different training content on topics ranging from Kubernetes to GitHub to MySQL, Amazon Web Services training, uh, PowerShell automation training, and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but one of the open source projects that I came across while doing some research is this really nice utility called Open Speed Test. Now, you're probably familiar with a bunch of different websites that allow you to do speed tests. You know, you can just Google speed tests, and you know, Google's got their own built in speed test here. Um, there's Ookla here as well. There's fast.com, you know, a bunch of different speed test sites that all kind of work differently here. And Sometimes it's nice to host your own speed test service rather than relying on some third party vendor. That way you have a little bit more control over exactly where that service is hosted. Maybe you want to run it on, you know, a cloud platform like DigitalOcean or Linode or Amazon Web Services or wherever you want to run it. And so this open source project called Open Speed Test allows you to do exactly that. Now it's got a really nice interface here. In fact, they, they actually have a hosted service over at openspeedtests.com as well. You can actually just run this if you'd like to directly from their managed service here. But again, if you want to run it yourself, you can actually do that really easily um, because they provide it as a Docker container image, or I guess I should say more properly, a Linux container image, an OCI image. And so what we can actually do is just spin this up using Docker. So let me see if they have an example command right down here. Sure enough, on their GitHub project page, you can see there's a Docker run command here. And they're basically exposing two different network ports. We've got port 3000 and port 3001. I'm not exactly sure what those different ports are used for, although I do know that port 3000 is the one that you connect to to actually access the uh, web interface on your own uh, hosted version. So this is the website at openspeedtest.com, but we want to run it ourselves. And I'm actually going to run it on a Kubernetes cluster rather than deploying it on uh, just a, a standalone Docker host. Now you can host Kubernetes clusters in a variety of different platforms. Um, I like to use you know, DigitalOcean or Linode because they just provide a really easy mechanism to spin up Kubernetes clusters here. But once you've got a Kubernetes cluster spun up, it's actually really easy to deploy open speed test here, because all you need to do is create a pod and then expose that pod through a service. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is just through a node port service in Kubernetes that you don't have to go through the process of you know, registering a domain name and exposing it through an ingress controller. There's a lot more complicated setup that you can do if you'd like to, but for a really simple, just kind of no frills hosted version, you can just use a node port service and expose the service on a uh, kind of randomized port on your Kubernetes worker nodes. So in my cluster here that I've spun up using the DigitalOcean managed cloud platform, I've got a single node pool with two different nodes here. And if I go over to droplets here, I can actually see the public IPv4 addresses associated with them. So I'll be able to hit one of these public IPv4 addresses from my cluster. So I've got a cluster up and running. This is the cluster that I already kind of pointed you over to. And if I hit N here, I should be able to see a list of nodes. Actually, that's kind of weird. It's only showing me one node. I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, but I'm using uh, K9S here. This is just a CLI tool that you can use to interactively explore your Kubernetes cluster. Um, you can see I've got a whole bunch of pods running on here for different applications. Uh, things like Prometheus, Tecton, and so on and so forth. Um, but if I just filter down to the default namespace here, if I hit the one key, you can see I've got some pods in here. And so I'm just going to deploy open speed test into its own dedicated namespace. And so I'm going to create a namespace for the open speed test for starters. So let me actually just exit out of K9S here really quick. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a, whoops, let me spin up a new shell here. Looks like it wanted to terminate for some reason. And I'm just going to set my kubeconfig file here so that I can use kubectl. When you uh, spin up your cluster on DigitalOcean, it'll give you a kubeconfig file. So you'll just download that from the portal here. So you go over to Kubernetes, and there'll be an option to download your kubeconfig under Actions right here. And then that's basically just what I'm setting my 
environment variable called kubeconfig2, and then that'll allow me to get kubectl connected to it. So if I do kubectl get node, I should have my two worker nodes right here, and then I can do output equals wide if I'd like to, and then I can get the external public IPv4 addresses for those nodes if I don't want to go into the uh, web-based console to get that information. So what we want to do for now is actually spin up a pod running open speed test here. And so if we head over to hub.docker.com and just do a search for open speed test here, there is a repository here on Docker Hub called open speed test slash latest. It's not a tag latest, although they do have a latest tag in here. The repository name is actually latest, um, which is kind of odd, but um, the tag name is going to be latest and the repository name is going to be under the organization open speed test and the repository name is latest as well. So this is what we want to use to actually create our pod. Now I'm going to go ahead and spin up a Microsoft Visual Studio Code instance, and I've also got uh, the Kubernetes extension for VS Code installed as well. So you can just go over to the extension marketplace and install this Kubernetes extension here, and this will give you some auto completion for certain types of resources in Kubernetes. So if you create a YAML file and just type something like deployment, that'll give us a template for a deployment controller, and then we can kind of fill in all the details here. I'm just going to rename this to open speed test. And then for the deployment spec, I'll just set the replicas property, oops, replicas to one. And then I'm going to go ahead and set the image here to open speed test slash latest. And then we could also add the tag of colon latest in there as well. And then for the resource limits here, maybe I'll just give it, um, I don't know, 500 megs of memory give it uh, maybe a full CPU share, 1000 CPU shares. That's basically one virtual CPU. And then for the ports down here, this is where we want to export, expose port 3000. And I'm also going to expose container port 3001. Both of those container ports are going to need to be exposed to access open speed test here. And I think that's everything we need for the deployment controller, but then we also need to expose it through a service resource as well. Let me just add in a service template down here and I'll call it open speed test. And then for the selector here, this is how we're going to select the containers or I should say the pods up here that it'll, the service will forward or route network traffic to. And so we've got this label applied to our pod here called app equals open speed test. And so we're going to make sure that our selector matches that as well and that will allow the service to register those pods as endpoints. And then for the ports, we're going to expose port 3000 and forward that to port 3000. And then we'll give it a name like web. And then we'll also expose port 3001, set the target port in the pod to 3001, and then give it a name of speed test. I think, I think port 3000 is just used for the web interface. And I'm, I'm assuming that port 3001 is used for uh, the actual speed test itself, but I haven't actually dug into the code to figure that out. And so I think that's pretty much everything we need here. I guess we do need to set the type here, otherwise it'll just create a cluster IP, which we wouldn't be able to access. So I'll set the type here to node port for the service, because we want a node port, not a cluster IP. And let's go ahead and try to apply this to our cluster now. All right, so we'll go ahead and do a PowerShell here string. And we'll pipe that into kube control apply. Oh, actually, I was going to create a namespace too. Sorry, one more thing here. So let's create a namespace. I'll do kind, uh, I think, namespace. And then API version should just be v1 metadata. We'll give it a name like open feed test. And then I'm also going to set the namespace metadata for these resources to that open speed test namespace. Copy that and bring it down to the service as well. And that'll just place the deployment controller and the service controller into the namespace that we're creating here. So that should work. Let's do a PowerShell here string, paste that in, do kube control apply file name dash and see if that works. All right, so we've created a speed test, open speed test namespace, and we created a deployment and a service.
Now we just want to verify that the deployment has successfully created a replica set, which in turn creates a pod. We'll do kube control get pod namespace open speed test. And it looks like our open speed test pod is up and running, which is good. And if we do a kube control get service from the same namespace, we should see our node port service here. And what you're going to see is that Kubernetes randomly assigned a port to the uh, service here. So basically, we're going to access node port 31633, and that's going to forward traffic to port 3000 on the service. And then, of course, the service is going to forward traffic to port 3000 on the pod because of the port mapping that we created right over here. So um, there's kind of two different hops that are happening. We're hitting the node on external port 31633. That's sending traffic to the service on port 3000. And then the service is taking traffic from port 3000 and forwarding that to the pod on port 3000. And that's how we ultimately get our connectivity to the pod that was spun up by this deployment controller. All right, so we've verified that everything is up and running here. So let's go ahead and actually try to do a kube control get node output wide. And then we're going to grab either external IP from either of these nodes here. So just pick one. And then we're going to attempt to open that in our browser here on port 31633. And we should be able to access our own open speed test interface here. So now I can just hit start. And now we are running a speed test against our open speed test instance right here from our web browser. And again, this is something that we've self-hosted on our own Kubernetes cluster here. So if you want to spin up your own open speed test instance on a Kubernetes cluster, this is how you can accomplish it. Um, do be aware that this is open to the internet. So if somebody knows the uh, node IP addresses that I have, as well as the port number that they need to connect to, they would actually be able to hit this service and then potentially uh, chew up bandwidth on this node by just running speed tests constantly. So uh, it's generally not a good idea to just leave this exposed out there. Um, there's lots of different ways to kind of secure these endpoints. Um, there's a tool called Teleport out there that you can use to actually secure endpoints, which is kind of nice uh, through a single sign-on interface. Um, but at the moment, this is just publicly exposed. So just be aware of that. And if you don't want somebody to be able to uh, utilize this service without your permission, you could just delete the service. So you could say kube control delete service open speed test from the namespace open speed test, and that'll just kill off the node port service. And then that pod is only listening on the internal cluster network. And so it's now no longer exposed to the outside world. So that's one way that you can accomplish that um, just to kind of secure it, but leave it running in the background. And then you could always just, you know, hit the up arrow a few times, reapply your manifest here. That'll just recreate the service if you've deleted it, and then you should be able to uh, access it again. Of course, the node port may have changed. You want to just do kube control get service. And sure enough, you can see that the node port has actually changed now that we've recreated the service. And so if we come back over here and just paste in the new port number, you can see that it's still accessible. So anyways, um, have fun with open speed test. It's a nice open source tool, um, really nice graphical interface here to give you some statistics about your uh, network performance. And you can run it on your own Kubernetes cluster wherever you'd like to. Take care and thanks for watching.